more and more, it seems, not it seems, more and more, uh, the fish you eat in a restaurant is coming, is farm-raised fish. Can you try, you just mentioned, Will, a little bit about it, but can you try to break it down in a little more detail exactly what they mean when they say farm-raised? What is a farm-raised fish or farm-raised salmon? Someone's in the restaurant, it says on the menu, farm-raised salmon. Uh, most people don't really know exactly what that means. W what exactly is the difference between a fish in the middle of the ocean swimming around and a farm-raised fish? What, tell us what, what it is and what's wrong with it. Well, I, you know, I, I can say it just briefly. Um, first of all, it, you know, it's nice if they say farm raised, but most people don't want to eat farm raised because uh, it's 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 everybody knows it's worse. I mean, you've got uh, the the flesh. If it's a salmon, it, if the their flesh is never the salmon color; it's gray, and so they they give this toxic chemical into their feed. Um, that causes retinal damage and uh, in order to make their flesh kind of pink looking. And uh, so usually if, if it said, I would say if it says wild caught salmon, then it's probably farm, it's probably farm raised. <laughs> I mean, there's no oversight on this. There's no, there's no like protection. You don't know what you're getting. You don't even know if it's salmon. It could be something else. I mean, really, the, there, there's been studies done on this uh, that uh, labeling is, is a it's a wild west show. But anyway, whatever it is. But if it's but the, the you know I've seen these places. I mean, I've, we've visited these these uh, factory farm places. There's onshore and offshore. The onshore ones are basically these big pools where they fill up with water and they put catfish or trout or tilapia in there and they cram it in so much, they cram them in so tightly. I remember looking in, and it was just like a black water. And I didn't think anything was, I thought it was empty. And then I realized it was actually crammed with fish and they could hardly move. They were so many and they were swimming in their own feces and, and they were just pouring in chemicals to keep them alive and antibiotics. I mean, it's absolute. And then they pull them out, they electrocute them, they skin them, a horrific suffering, horrific, toxic food mm -hmm. you're eating, full of chemicals and toxic. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, if they're offshore, it's the same thing. They're known to just spew chemicals like in Scotland or anywhere where they are. And uh, they, they, uh, they're, an, they're a nightmare. They're gene now there's genetically engineered salmon that they're using. They're escaping into the wild populations. I mean, they're, they're, it's just one egregious insult of the environment after the other in, in this arrogant quest for profits and making people sick and there's profits in making people sick right it's the same business the pharmaceutical is companies are a branch of the chemical companies they make money on this they want people sicker the sicker they are the more money they make the more uh they get people to to buy animal foods the more money they make uh, on the animals and the more money they make on the human beings who eat who don't understand and eat this stuff wild caught fish is concentrates toxins also so i mean uh yeah it, it's uh, there's more there's more to it but that's the basic scenario as i understand um so i understand why um killing a fish is bad for the fish and unkind but what impact does eating explain how eating a piece of fish in a restaurant is impacting the environment, the ocean, the coral reefs, ocean acidification, uh, climate change, species extinction, anything else? How does the piece, how was my eating of a piece of fish in a restaurant affecting all these different environmental things? How how is it linked? Can you explain that, anyone? Well, we're, well as has kind of been mentioned, you know, we're 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 strip mining the oceans. Uh, obviously, if it's coming from a fish factory essentially uh, a fish farm i think farm is a bit of a euphemistic term here then it's been fed other fish there's a feed conversion ratio of three or five to one so then we're we're essentially it's a protein factory in reverse just like with animal agriculture of land-based animals and so we're strip mining the oceans then too in most cases or feeding them junk from our farms which again has a terrible environmental impact and then you know the, the farm fish are massive sources of pollution that are having to be disposed of in some way, which is polluting our oceans and acidifying them. And the, uh, the uh, wild caught fish are being uh, harvested. I don't know, that's not the right, my favorite term, but they're being killed and captured at, at a 
terrifying rate, we're on course to a future where there's more plastic than fish in our oceans because we're wiping out fish and we're dumping plastic. And a lot of the big fishing trawlers are also dumping their plastic nets into the oceans in large quantities. And now all of that fish has microplastics in it. Uh, and of course they are up, up a long food chain. So they also have heavy metals and other toxins that they bioaccumulate up the food chain. So that's the other danger for humans who eat this is they're getting a lot of plastic and they're getting a lot of toxins along with the fish. So, um, you know, all of this is having this really egregious environmental impact. It's, it's not sustainable. I mean, with 8 billion humans on this planet, you know, yes, the, the oceans are vast and they, they're abundant and they're rich with life. But for humans to go in there and take huge amounts of fish out of them or farm fish over here, take all this stuff from the oceans and dump it into the farms, feed it to the fish, and then they eat that uh, is, is, is uh, an environmental problem. And the, the good news is we can, we can do better. You know, we can do better and more sustainable and more ethical and, and end up being healthier. Now, I want to acknowledge that there that a lot of people do eat fish because there are studies that show uh, benefits health-wise to people's neurology, to their heart disease risk, to other issues when they eat fish. And I wanna name that in many cases, that's because they're eating fish instead of beef or other animal products that are super high in saturated fats, which we know are linked to a lot, a whole host of health problems. And the other likely factor is that fish does have a lot of omega-3 fatty acids in it. And so I do recommend for somebody who is going to be vegan to consume some algae sourced EPA and DHA which have that omega-3 fatty acid mix that you can't get unless you bioconvert it yourself out of the um, out of the ALA. EPA and DHA are not available in any food sources other than certain forms of algae and fish that eat that algae essentially up the food chain. So I think EPA and DHA are beneficial and um, we don't have any really good long-term studies on this, but because um, a lot of vegans haven't taken it historically, but I believe that when we add that to a well-planned whole foods, plant-based diet or vegan diet, you could probably get the very best of health. What does eating animal products have to do with deforestation and desertification? What, what are these issues and um, how are they related to eating animal products? Well, one thing I think, since we're talking, we were just talking about fish, um, people don't make the connection very often between deforestation and eating fish. And the thing to understand is that like right now we're cutting down, depending on which science uh, you follow with anywhere from one to maybe four acres per second of Amazonian rainforest. I mean, this is completely unsustainable. Some scientists are saying that within our lifetimes, the, the Amazon will completely collapse. It'll, it'll reach a critical mass and we, it'll become a desert uh, because you gotta have a certain amount of trees to make that much water, to make that much rain. And when, if we keep going, and so why are they cutting down all these forests in the Amazon and other rainforests around the world? It's to mainly grow uh, soybeans. And the soybeans is not to make tofu. I mean, the soybeans is mainly as animal feed to cows and pigs and chickens and factory farm fish eat huge amounts of soybeans. And they feed these, the, like in the case of fish, they feed the soybeans to, to uh, like tilapia and trout and catfish that eat that kind of stuff. Then they feed those animals to the salmon and the other more carnivorous fish. But the whole thing is, so you're eating, you may get your, your fish and you're, you're causing deforestation you know, directly. Um, so this whole idea of that we can cut down forests and, just, and, cause, and like you say, cause deserts um, so that we can have our meat and have our dairy and have our eggs because that's really what's causing it. And these, the Amazon rainforest is being cut down and, and these soybeans and the products from that are being shipped to China, to the United States, to Europe, I mean, worldwide. So if we buy it here in the United States or wherever it is, uh, it could directly be affecting the Amazon. So uh, I think it's really important to see all these things, even if it's fish, you know, it could be cutting down the Amazon actually. If we look deeply into the interconnected web of violence that animal agriculture always causes. And I would add also to that, uh, focusing kind of more locally on the US, we have an issue of land use going, so much of the land is going to animal agriculture, grazing animals, uh, growing the grain to feed the animals. And now if we want to move in the direction 
that the animal agriculture industry is proposing as the solution to the detrimental problem, uh, which is now they're touting regenerative grazing and getting the animals out of the confinement buildings and onto grazing land, uh, we're gonna have a huge deforestation problem and dewilding problem because to make room for all of these animals, uh, we're gonna have to be, you know, destroying wetlands and uh, and and prairies and you know uh, outdoor wonderful wild areas to make room for all these local grass-fed free-range animals. Uh, we don't have the space to spare. Uh, we need these animal or these spaces to stay wild to be sequestering carbon. We need to be planting trees, rewilding land. We need more land to be sequestering carbon, uh, not less. And so that is a very dangerous solution that the industry is proposing that definitely connects to deforestation. And we yeah. plus, and we also need uh, these forests for habitat for uh, for animals and for plants. I mean that we're. We're in the largest mass extinction of species in 65 million years, and it's driven directly by animal agriculture cutting down forests and overfishing the oceans. Uh, so again, it's a great question, Steve, and it's a huge impact. Yeah, and, and just to kind of show how you know um, it affects so much is um, Hope just mentioned that you know it it also affects uh, climate change because the trees are. Uh, you know they store a lot of CO2, and you cut them all down, and and you don't get that storage, and and all of that emissions go up. And then also to tie back um, to what we talked about earlier um, as well with pandemics, that's where the novel viruses are. They're in the places, they're in the wild habitats that we never have been to before. And so you just chop them all down, and and not take any precautions with uh, you know human coming into contact and stuff. You. You, that's where that's where pandemic starts.